Hi Stampers, this is Lisa with Queen Bee Creations here with today's Facebook Live. Thank you for joining me. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I go live every Monday right here on Facebook to show you guys a new card, a new gift, a new something. It's just kind of a free online class teaching you that there's no stress in stamping. Uh, I try to take things that people perceive to be complicated and we make it easy for them and I invite you to ask questions, to interact with me, and to have fun. So I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so of course I'm using all Stampin' Up! supplies and they can all be purchased through me in my online store. And the beauty of that is you're not just purchasing materials, you're purchasing my help to go with that. And today we're making a pinwheel card. And what that means is it's kind of a pinwheel. So uh, I did this one using a different suite. This is the elegantly said bundle, um, but we're gonna be using the penguin place for today's card. But just know that any card that we make with this fold, all you have to do is change up what you're using in the way of designer series paper and sentiments, and you can make this card for any occasion out there. <laughs> this is the card we're making. And I'm there are lots of um, folds out there that do the pinwheel, and some of them have, you know, the four pieces, some have six. There's, you know, any number of different patterns. What I liked about this one is that it fits into the standard envelope. And so you can still use our medium size envelopes and it will fit into there. And I always, when I make mine and get them ready to share on, in my classes, I'll put them inside our clear envelopes. And these are just the medium clear envelopes and it will hold the envelope and the card. And this keeps them from getting kind of messed up when I take them to craft fairs or pass them around my um, classes. So what you're going to need to get started, this is different, we're not starting out with a standard card base. We're going to start out with a piece that is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And this is our thinner Whisper White. And I did the thinner because I've been told that it's much more easy to manipulate if you use designer series paper or the thinner cardstock in the middle. Go ahead and we're going to burnish the edges on this one. And then I have some additional pieces here. I have four pieces of our fresh freesia cardstock. And I need to replace my blade. So I've got a little bit of fuzzy stuff on the end. If you have these issues, I can't find it right now, but I do have a small piece of sandpaper that I keep in my desk because there are a lot of times when I need a new blade because I cut so much paper. But a little soft brush with an emery board, um, if you have a nail file sitting around, that'll knock all those little burrs off the edge. But I digress. Here we go. This piece is two and three quarter by four and one quarter, and I need four of them. And then we're going to decorate that with two pieces that are pattern out of our designer series paper. And this one's four inches by two and a half. And this one, these two are four inches by one and a half. And so I've got them two of each in this pattern and then two of each in this pattern. And then I have a piece that I'm gonna do for my message on the back and that's three and a half by two. And you'll see what I do with that. And then I've just got some scraps because I was gonna put a sentiment using our double oval punch. And so I have some scrap papers for that. I just took a piece, I think it was two and a quarter by six and I glued it on here and then I flipped it over and just trimmed from the back side. Really easy. And you can also, you know, stamp in the corners or, you know, you can stamp on the flap. There's lots of things you can do. But since they match, I keep them together. See, that's how I'm gonna use the, the small white paper in the back for your message. So usually when I'm doing these boxes and things that need to adhere, you know, rather than trying to do this kind of suspended in air and try to figure out how I'm doing this, I find the best way to make it fold flat after my project is finished is to glue it together flat. Because I know that if I put adhesive right here and then I close it, it'll open up just fine. And then when I go to, you know, close the card after it's all finished, it's going to lay nice and flat for me. 
So you can use liquid glue, probably seal plus, because this is gonna get some activity. And anytime I do something that gets activity, if there's movement and I'm gonna be moving it around a lot, then I want something stronger. And now I know I'm perfectly square because I can go both directions and it folds flat. So that's our tower out of the middle. Not difficult so far, right? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna adhere the fresh freesia cardstock. Again, like I said, this is four and a quarter by two and three quarter. There's four of them. I'm gonna go ahead and put those on here. Use some seal plus. And I'm getting it near the edges. I've got top and bottom, front and back. I don't need to cover the entire thing with adhesive, but I wanna make sure that it's good and stable. And then I'm just butting it up to the score line right there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the next one. I'm just gonna rotate it and I'm gonna put some adhesive here and then butt it up to the score. And we're gonna do this the four times. For the last one, I'm gonna leave it this way. And there's our pinwheel. I mean, that's our hardest part. And it wasn't even hard, right? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my designer series paper and I'm gonna alternate them. And I'm going to decorate one on this side. And so since I put the fresh freesia one there, I'm gonna do the polka dots on this side so that it's complementary. And I suppose I don't need the plus for this one because these aren't getting movement, but I just happen to have it out. It would be more cost efficient to move to the other. So if you're following along with me, switch to the regular seal. We don't need that on our layers. So I'm just doing this on the reverse side. So it's kind of a mirror image. And my nails are not painted today, but I can assure you that's going to change. I've gotten so many compliments when I paint my nails, but it's really expensive to go to the salon. And it's really time consuming to do them on my own with, you know, the base coat, the top coat, you know, all those different things that need to be done. But a fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrator introduced me to Gel Moments, and I loved it so much I signed up to get the discount and share it with you guys because it is awesome. It is one polish. That's all you have to do is put one polish on and it automatically has the base coat and the top coat built into it. And it's totally non-toxic, you know, all that good stuff. It's totally healthy. And to take it off, you're not using acetone and you don't need to soak them for an hour. It's, it's wonderful stuff. I'm so excited about it. Everybody says you're supposed to have a side gig, right? This will always be my full time. I love Stampin' Up! I'm not going anywhere from that, but I might as well have pretty nails while y'all are looking at them up close like this, right? And with the non-toxic part, I love that I can share it with my granddaughters and they don't get exposed to toxins. So there we go. Now it's decorated. Still simple, right? Moving right along. Okay, then I just decided that I'm going to have my sentiment the area I'm going to write in on the back side. And I always stamp a little something and it's so small, I don't think I want to stamp any of the animals or anything, but here's some little snowflakes. We can make this match. Nothing fancy, just something to make it match. Okay, because this is mostly white, I think it's gonna pop more if I put it over here on the Fresh Freesia Designer Series paper. And then the same deal with our little polar bear. I fussy cut this out of the designer series paper. This was on the back side. I put it away already. Imagine that. My counter is clean. <laughs> um, on the back side were lots of little animals, and the penguin punches out with our penguin punch. But the polar bear and the fox I fussy cut. It was not difficult. The brother scan and cut probably wouldn't do this one because he's kind of on a white background and he's white, so there's not really enough definition for the scanner to pick it up. Probably should have put him more towards the bottom, but I've already got glue there, so I'll have to find something to set him on here so he's not floating in midair. We were taught um, in a scrapbooking class years ago to either, you know, shadow underneath it or something, make it look like he's not suspended in midair. 
so I'll go back and do that but then we have our other little guys so I can put him here and like I said, just a little decoration. So depending on, you know, who's standing around from what angle, they can all see something. And this is a great card to send to somebody that they can display or, you know, give to people at the office so they can set it up and people will ask questions about it. I love that sense of, you know, ooh, did you make that? And ooh, that's so cool. I get that a lot, which I love. Another reason I'm excited about my job. People go, oh, I couldn't possibly do that. But if you've watched any of my videos, you can totally do this. Mm -hmm. It's not difficult at all. So now I'm ready to do my sentiment. And I wanted this sentiment. Okay, and this says, to the coolest friend ever. And I want it to be straight, so I'm going to set it down on a line. Because when I just stuck it direct to the block, did you see it kind of went a little wonky? Don't want wonky. And then I'm going to bring in my stamp pad. Now, obviously, this sentiment is too long to fit in my oval. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink one half. So I'm not inking any of this. It's only doing to the coolest. And then I'm going to make sure that it's good and clean. Or Simply Chamois is great for this. Because it also leaves it fairly dry. And then we want Friend Ever. So again, I'm just carefully selecting where I'm inking it. And if you were to get anything on the other letters, you can just easily knock them off. And then because they're clear, you can look straight down from the top. I usually stamp first and then stick it in my punch and I look from the back side because this allows me to watch where it's being punched and center it properly. And I almost always do these little strips so that I'm only getting the bottom oval I'm not punching too because I don't know what I would do with a white oval. I would have to have something colored to put it on. And then I'm going to do the top one with the Misty Moonlight, which is one of the colors back here in the Designer Series paper. So we'll just layer these two together. And then, oh, that's what we can have him sitting on. Okay, that worked out well, didn't it? <laughs> We're going to ground him because our message is back here. And you could put it on any one. I mean, I'd, I suppose it doesn't matter if you were to stick it on one of the other ones. That might be a good filler for up there. You could even do multiple messages. I've seen these done where there's a sentiment on every panel. But let's go ahead and ground our bear since that was bugging me anyway. And I'm going to make it flat. I could pop it up, but because of the way this closes, I think I'm going to leave it flat so that when I close it, there's no bulk right there. But really, that's all there is to it. So do y'all think you could make one of these? Not as hard as it looks, huh? This is our card. Again, my name is Lisa. I'm with Queen Bee Creations. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I go live every Monday right here on Facebook to teach you something fun and exciting. And I look forward to seeing you right back here next Monday at 2.30 for another Facebook Live. Thanks. Bye.